Okay, we've looked at 30 degree angles and 45 degree angles and 60 degree angles, but obviously an angle could potentially have any measure. And in the real world, angles of all different sizes show up. Just It's not just 30 or 60 or 45 degree angles. So we're going to talk about sine and cosine for other angles. And I'm going to start off talking about the sine of a small angle. Now, these ideas that I'm going to go over now are not at all difficult but simply follow my reasoning through these next few pages and you will understand the sine and cosine more deeply. These ideas are not hard, but they are important and um, are, are going to be helpful if you get a grasp on these. Now look at this. For a small angle, we know that the sine of an angle is always the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. And look at this angle right here, this little tiny angle. Clearly, if that angle is small, then the opposite side is short compared to the hypotenuse. Looking at that triangle, that idea should make a lot of sense to you. So it should make sense to you that for a small angle, sine of theta will be small. So if I have a little tiny angle like this, because the opposite side is small, the ratio opposite over the hypotenuse is small. Now if the angle is really tiny, then the opposite side is even smaller. So as the side here gets really, really short, this ratio of the opposite length of the hypotenuse gets really, really tiny. In fact, as the angle gets really tiny, the sine of the angle, this ratio, will approach zero. And if the angle goes all the way to zero, then we don't have a triangle anymore. We could call this a degenerate triangle. It's really just a line segment. But the opposite side here would be of height zero. If you think of this as a degenerate triangle, the opposite side there is height zero. And there is no, uh, the, the sine of the angle is zero over the length of the hypotenuse, which would be zero. So we can write this. We can say, as theta approaches zero, so you imagine this angle here getting smaller and smaller and smaller. As theta approaches zero, the sine of theta approaches zero. And this little arrow is a standard mathematical notation indicating that this variable is getting closer and closer to this value. So as theta approaches zero, the sine of theta approaches zero. And that should make sense to you if you understand that the sine of an angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And if theta goes all the way to zero, then the opposite side disappears, and we can say that the sine of zero, excuse me, that says zero right there, the sine of zero is equal to zero. I'll put a degree mark there to make it clear that that's an angle. The sine of a zero degree angle is zero. And now let's think about what happens for a large angle. And we're thinking about this angle right down here. That's my angle theta. So this is my opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse. And you see now that theta has become pretty large. The sine of theta is still the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse. But you can see that in this case, the opposite side has gotten larger, but it will never be bigger than the hypotenuse. In a right triangle, the hypotenuse is always the longest side. So as this angle gets larger, the opposite side here gets bigger and bigger, but it's never bigger than this. So the opposite side here will always be smaller than the hypotenuse. But as this angle gets bigger and bigger, this gets closer and closer to the value of the hypotenuse. So, so this side here can get almost as long as the hypotenuse, but not quite. So this is almost equal to the hypotenuse, but not quite. So as the angle gets large, the sine of theta is always less than 1, but just barely. And I'll just write it like that. The sine of theta is less than 1, but just barely so. So it's just slightly less than 1. And that, that uh, becomes more and more true the bigger this angle gets. If this angle gets to 89.99999 degrees, then sine of theta is really, really close to 1, but just a little bit less than 1. And you can picture this if you imagine these angles getting larger. So here's my angle. We're looking at this angle down in this corner. 
so that's my angle theta and it's getting bigger and if if this angle gets really big the triangle gets really thin and the opposite side here is almost as long as the hypotenuse if this angle were to get all the way to 90 degrees the opposite side and the hypotenuse would merge into the same side we would again have a degenerate triangle but we're thinking about a little 90 degree angle right there and in this case at 90 degrees the opposite side and the hypotenuse are the same so the sine of theta would be opposite over hypotenuse which would be 1 so we can say as theta approaches 90 degrees the sine of theta approaches 1 and when it gets all the way to 90 degrees the sine of theta is equal to exactly 1 so you can also write the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1 now you should know those facts that the sine of 0 degrees is equal to 0 and the sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1 but you shouldn't simply memorize them you should understand why they are true and hopefully these little diagrams and your understanding of the fact that sine is opposite over hypotenuse will help you see why that is the case okay and uh, some quick examples demonstrating this we're looking at this angle angle theta is this tiny little angle here and we're told to find the sine of theta so th sine of theta will be opposite over hypotenuse and in this case the opposite side is length 1 and the hypotenuse is 10.05 so we just do that on the calculator and we get 0 0.0995 and you see yeah when theta is a small number or a small angle the sine of theta is a small number and in this example our angle theta here is fairly large and we're looking at the sine the sine of angle theta again that's going to be the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the hypotenuse and the side opposite theta here is 19 and the hypotenuse is 19.4 and you can see that the opposite side is less than the hypotenuse but only by a little bit and on the calculator 19 divided by 19.4 comes up to 0 0.9794 so we see if angle theta is pretty large close to 90 degrees but not quite then the sine of the angle is close to 1 but not quite so again, 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 being able to do this calculation is obviously important, but anyone can do that. Dividing 19 by 19.4 on the calculator is just a matter of hitting some keys. What you should understand is that in this case, theta is large, and so the sine of theta is nearly equal to 1, and that should make sense from looking at the lengths of those sides, just like it should make sense back here that this angle is small, so the sine of theta is really small and that should make sense just from looking at the lengths of those sides so don't just simply be able to do the calculation make sense of why you get a number that is what it is